Hi, this is Sarah Mikesel with The Dairy Site, and today we're here with Dr. Joel Pankowski. He is a senior manager with the, with the Dairy Technical Services team with Arm & Hammer Animal and Food Production. Thanks for being with us today, Joel. Appreciate the opportunity, Sarah. Very good. And uh, today we're here at World Dairy Expo in Madison, Wisconsin, and we're going to talk a little bit about forage today. And um, in and this is all related to a, a bit about the variable weather conditions that we continue to see here, not just in the Midwest, but all across the country, obviously. Tell me what producers should do to account for this variability and its impact on their forage and ultimately on their herd. That's a great question. I think what we're finding is as you move across the dairy states from, we'll say, New York through Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, and in, in, into Wisconsin in particular, around the Great Lakes, the rainfall is very, very variable this year. Um, most of those states that I mentioned uh, for the month of September were behind multiple inches of rain. Uh, so the good news is the fields are hard. We're not going to do a lot of damage when we harvest. The bad news is, so to speak, um, going to be drier than normal. Going to have to start thinking about things that come with dry forages, such as higher ash contents from the dirt. Uh, possible pathogen contaminations of the feedstuffs, and then molds and mycotoxins. So, um, you know, when you look at that type of thing, what can you do to help control that? Well, a couple things. From a, from a nutrient profile perspective, you're going to want to obviously, standard practice in most cases is sample those forages when they go in. Right. And when we, when we open up the bunk, we sample again. But I, I, I think this year it's even more imperative that we want to as we move through those, periodically talk to your nutritionist, find a period of time, an interval of time to, to, to resample and continue to sample to ensure that you have consistent nutrient content and then also the digestibility. Um, because what we're going to find is the reports are consistent. Um, it very well could have rained on, in one field and a mile away it didn't rain at all. And in the past, we've seen certain states impacted by weather, certain regions of a state impacted by weather. Now you're seeing this year, first year that I can remember in a while, where it's actually inner, inner property. So a farm is going to have some fields that are great for quality and quantity, and other fields, you know, quantity probably not an issue this year, but quality is going to vary. So like you said, you just really need to be measure measure and be mindful of it, right? Yeah, and then, and then be conscious and work with your nutritionist. There's tools available to producers that are well-researched that can help mitigate the mycotoxin challenge and address any of the pathogen control issues that would arise from this higher ash content because of the dry weather. Very good. And let's t also talk a little bit about uh, high feed prices, right? What, what's Arm & Hammer doing to help producers out there? Yeah. I, I think what you're seeing is, uh, again, this is going to be a unique year going into 2024. Um, feed costs traditionally, we'll look at the commodity markets and watch them fluctuate based on that. This year the markets look pretty decent, um, but the costs tend to be higher. And, and it's because of things we don't talk about traditionally when it comes to feed costs. Transportation costs, fuel costs, electric, electricity costs at the, at the mills to run the mills. Those costs ultimately all get passed on to the customer, which is the dairy producer. Um, and so that's what's going to drive some of this up. I mean, if we just look at fuel prices across the country, as I talk to our sales managers, you know, in New York, we're paying $4 for gas. In Ohio, it's three and a half. In, New in, in California, it's almost seven. So it's, it's, it's going to have an impact. Um, this whole inflationary period we're in is going to have an impact on feed costs we haven't seen. Uh, as far as Arm & Hammer, um, I guess the thing I would tell folks is, you know, we talked about, with, as with the forage quality, eliminating variation and taking control of your own destiny. Don't be so hesitant to, or be more hesitant to just strip everything out to save money. I think we learned in 2009 that was not the way to go. Um, so, I, again, it, there's things that are in these diets for specific reasons. Make sure you work with a nutritionist that looks at these products from a standpoint of they're coming from a reputable company with good service and support and good science behind it. And yes, there's a cost to doing business, unfortunately, for all of us. Um, but just cutting costs for the sake of cutting costs, um, I think we've already figured out that's probably not a good practice. Very good, and I'm, I'm sure, I mean, kind of what you said before, it's it's really also po potentially dependent on your forage, right? And, yeah. and, and where you can make those, you know, sacrifices, I guess, is, is the best way to describe it in some cases. I mean, nobody likes to think of it that way, but um, 
you know, when margins are tight, they are going to tighten things, but you really need to think about your specific situation, right? Yeah, and if, and, and if you're in one of these areas that you got the luck of the draw and yeah. consistent rain and you've got good quality and good quantity, then you're going to have a, probably an opportunity to lower your purchase feed price. Right. You know, you, again, working with your nutritionist, you can probably feed more forage than you have in the past and make up for some of the differences in the purchase feed price that you've had in the past. Um, if, if, if the flip is that is true, then you, you may have more of an investment this year in feed costs, not just above and beyond what we talked about, the operating and fuel costs. You may have to actually increase your purchase feed prices to make up for that quality issue. And that's why I say continue to test as you move through so you can make those adjustments on the fly and be, I guess, more preventative and, as opposed to reactionary. Right, because that quality really does make a difference in the end. And, and and how much milk you're producing. Right? Absolutely, and that's at the end of the day, cows like consistency, they don't like a lot of change, uh, and, and in order for them to perform at this elite athlete level that we right. want them to, you've got to make sure that you put enough fuel in the tank and it's, and it's digestible fuel for them to, to, to produce for you. Very good. Well, thanks for all the information today, Joel. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank Very you. Very good. Thanks. This is Sarah Mikesell with the Dairy Site.